Uncle George. Uncle George is your dear nephew, Stanislas, calling you from Guyana. Uncle George, Uncle George, you, you, look, you don't got to talk so fast like a machine gun. <laughs> no, it's not a collect call. I'm calling you with a calling card. So we have time to discuss your problems. <laughs> Why are you calling you in the middle of the day? Well, Uncle George, since you last your job, I, I, I figure that since you got nowhere to go during the day, then you must be at home. I just want to tell you, Uncle George, that I'm very sorry about what happened to you in this time of stress and distress. You have my sympathies and all my apologies in this your time of need. Yes. Who, 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 tell, who tell me you lose your work? Uncle George, Uncle George. America might be far away, but this wall is getting flatter and smaller. <laughs> we could hear when y'all fought in America. <laughs> well, uh, well, Monta's son coming from New York three weeks ago, and he break the news to me in the rum shop, Papi rum shop. No, the whole country don't know that you ain't got a job no more. <laughs> What's the people in this village? <laughs> I agree, was not he business to discuss your business. But, but you know what has happened when you're taking a little drink in the rum shop, especially when it's somebody else paying for the rum. <laughs> At first, he didn't say how you, you lost your job. He said that you, you joined the ranks of the unemployed. Uncle George that had me confused for a couple of days because I said, like you joined the army. <laughs> The army got ranked. <laughs> <laughs> Even if America start another war, they, they will want an old man like you. You do hardly hear or see proper. What are you going to do with gun? Yeah, I suspect he ain't got a job to go back to. He drinking rum every day. And he, he, he telling people how he take leave. But the way he going on, it look like he take the whole tree. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle, I tell you how I'm sorry about what happened to you. I'm really sorry if, if, if I could help in any way, just let me know. I got, I got a lot of plantings for the farm. I could get somebody to send a whole suitcase for you. What? The doctor tell you to stop eating plantings? Well, well then got anything else I can send. The, 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 the cow giving milk, but but that would spoil by the time it reached America. People say that America get just like Guyana with so many people out of work. I would still prefer America do Uncle George because you will have to get a work first before you lose it. <laughs> In this village, it's impossible to lose your work. 
because you ain't got one in the first place. <laughs> you, you know me, Uncle George. America or Guyana, I don't need a job. I can take care of myself. As long as they got land, I can plant and mine cow. I can't lose me work. I can't lose the work at all because me and intensify myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so good, Judge. I, I, I tell you, I'm really sorry you lose your work, Uncle George. Yes, Uncle George is a, a real sad story. Yeah. I'm sure when you hear your story, me story, Uncle George, you're gonna um, you're gonna feel sorry for me too. No, Uncle George, thankfully nobody in dead or, or <laughs> sick. No, 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 the neighbors are right. No, the cow in there, and I just tell you that brown girl giving milk. <laughs> no, the house still standing. The high wind just blow down the latrine. <laughs> I using Gobadan latrine at the moment. Uncle charge the thing stink bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Uncle George. You see, you see, Uncle George. You don't need DNA tests to know that me and you is blood relatives. You know me problem before I tell you. Yes, Uncle George, you're very right. It is a money problem. Yes, Uncle George. The police charged me. They said that you own flesh and blood is a cow thief. The senator, I thief, Johnson Bull Cow, Uncle George. If I thief, he cow? It was a, a slight mistake in the charge. Uncle George, it is a simple mix up. Farmers mix up with animals, and yet they charge me. <laughs> you, you, you know, but you're a hammer? Yes, the same man. A man who used to come and buy animals in the middle of the night. Small, big, <laughs> wild, tame, lame, blind, you name it, he buy it. <laughs> I, 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 I even sell it. Go but on, old donkey. <laughs> I hear you say, he sell it as goat meat by losing on market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, Uncle George. One dark night, Butcher Rahman come by. And as soon as we finish loading up one of me bull when he truck, bam! Johnson and the police arrive. Officer, I'm not. It's only when policeman I'm not flash a light, me realize the mix up. Look at charge. It's Johnson Bull, me the selling Rahman. <laughs> of course I didn't thief Johnson Bull or charge. I tell you it was a dark night. That bull sneak in me yard with me other animals and I didn't even notice till the police appear. Oh, cows I got. I got three cows, Uncle George. One heifer and two bull. That is why, that is why, that is why I decide to sell a bull. 
I am not a modern thinker. I believe in one man to one woman and one bull to one heifer. Hmm. No, I, I don't need glass, Uncle Judge. I don't need glasses. I just use a lot of fish and vegetables. But you know how animals just create confusion in the cow pen. If I explain that, Uncle Judge, you think some members of the Guyana police force has listened to reason? What happened to Rahman? Well, he just gave the police some money and they allowed me to drive off in the truck. Hmm. They marched me down to the police station and charged me and put me for bail. That is the problem, Uncle George. I, I didn't have enough money to bribe them. <laughs> yes, Uncle George, I talked to Johnson. He understands it's a, it's a simple farmer's mix-up. It, it happened the, the, the other day. He had Gobadan bull in he pen for three weeks before he realized it was not he owned. Johnson agreed to drop the charges, but the police threatened for charge for giving false information and for wasting the time when he tell them that he bull stray away in me yard. But they, but they, but they give you a ticket for allowing a animal to stray on the public roadway. <laughs> I had to sell me bull to Johnson to pay me bail. <laughs> I'm willing to give them the rest of the money to drop the charges. But like they determining to see me got a court. I don't know why they don't want to take me money. <laughs> uh, no, no, Uncle George. There is a way for you to help me. That is why I call you in the first place. You, you know I always willing to help you, Uncle George. And I know you will be willing to help your favorite nephew too. Ah. I know somebody who know the magistrate who hearing me case. The magistrate say <laughs> for two hundred US dollars he will dismiss the case. <laughs> yeah. Kujaja, you hear me? You didn't hear when I said $200? Uh, uh, all right, well, well, I will continue talking before this card run out. D there is a way to help your favorite nephew. The magistrate say that if somebody in America deposit $200 in the account in America, he would drop the case. Uh, no, 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 they, they, they don't want, they don't, they, they don't want a Swiss account no more than before <laughs> American accounts. <laughs> Uncle George? Uncle George, you still there? <laughs> Can't be this phone. It's got to be the phone. Every time I mention $200, suddenly he can't hear. Uncle George, Uncle George, dear, don't go off the phone. We still got a lot of things to discuss. Oh, God. Oh, God, I don't believe this. This old man lose his job and now we lose all his senses. As soon as I mention $200, the man disconnect his phone. George, Uncle George, pick up his phone or I will call your collect. What? <laughs> Montas Sunrise for talk your name. Lost it. Oh, my son. 